All right. So now that we're done talking about um, uh, complex numbers, we spent the first like four sections of this chapter talking about complex numbers. Now we're going to talk about something completely different. <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, polar equations and graphs. Um, it, it's different, but then some of the ways, some of the methods that you use for doing certain things in this section are very similar to the methods that you use to do certain things with complex numbers, especially when you're changing them into polar form. So anyway, but there's a lot of uh, just definitions and stuff here. So I, I put together these notes <clears throat> um, for this section. So here we go. Um, the coordinate system that you're used to working with is called the rectangular coordinate system. And in the rectangular coordinate system, we describe points in terms of their horizontal and vertical distances from the origin. So for example, the point negative three, two describes the points, the point three units left and two units above the origin, right? So negative three, two is that point right there. In the polar coordinate system, points are described in terms of the angle that they make with the positive x-axis and their directed distance from the origin. So in, in this case, we call the positive x-axis the polar axis, and we call the origin the pole, um, in case those terms come up again. So for example, let's just practice plotting some points in, uh, that are given to us in polar coordinates. Polar coordinates are always given as r theta. Right, so the radius and then theta. Although I think it's easier to figure out what theta is first and then go out our units from there. So, <clears throat> so here's a, a polar axis, uh, or a, a, sorry, like a polar coordinate system, I guess. And if we wanna plot the point three, 150 degrees, then <clears throat> um, we would go to 150 degrees, that's this angle right here. And then we would go out three, one, two, three, along that angle. So that's the point three, 150. Uh, we could do this in radians as well. In fact, I think it's more common actually to do it with radians. So if we wanted to point, plot the point one, three pi over two. So there's pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two. So one, three pi over two is right there. zero pi over four. So pi over four is this uh, angle right here, but the radius is zero, so we're just gonna be right there at the pole, okay? And then two negative 60. So negative 60 goes in the negative direction. So this is negative 30, negative 45, negative 60 right here. And then we wanna be out two, one, two. So there's the point two, negative 60, okay? Um, now, as you can see, uh, with the rectangular coordinate system, each point has just a unique representation. In the polar coordinate system, each point has infinitely many different ways to describe it. Uh, like this point right here, you know, we, we called it 2, negative 60, but we could just as easily have called it uh, 2, oh, 2, what would this be? 2, so two 300. Right, so this is also the point two three hundred. Or another way we could have described it is we could we could have called it one hundred and twenty negative two. Right, so a whole bunch of different ways to describe these things. Um, so for example, I, I believe that all four of these are the same point. I could be wrong. Actually, they're maybe not all the same point. But, but let's take a look at them. So four thirty, so thirty degrees, and then out four units would be right there. 4, negative 30, so negative 30 would be here, 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, so I was wrong. So they're not all the same, the same point. Uh, and then we have negative 4, 30, so there's 30 degrees right here, but then because it's negative 4, we go in the opposite direction, 4. So there's negative 4, 30. And then we have negative 4, negative 30, so there's negative 30 and then negative 4, uh, it would put us at one, two, three, four, right there. Okay, so there are those points. I think example three is probably the one I was thinking of. So uh, 
It says, show that the following polar coordinates describe the same point. So all four of these describe exactly the same point. Let's see. So 11 pi over 6, that's put, that puts us all the way at this angle right here, right? So 11 pi over 6, and then 2, 1, 2. So there's part A. And then part B asks us for 2, negative pi over 6. Well, negative pi over 6 is, once again, this angle, and 1, 2. So sure enough, we land on the same point. Negative 2, 5 pi over 6. So 5 pi over 6 puts us at this angle right here, right? Here's 5 pi over 6. And negative 2, would, we would go in this direction and sure enough, end up at the same point, right? Negative 2, negative 7 pi over 6. Negative 7 pi over 6 would be that angle right there. And then negative 2 puts us right back at that same point. So yeah, so all four of those. And there are more. There are more ways to describe that point. Like I said, there are infinitely many ways to describe that point in polar coordinates. Okay, um, so that's the idea there. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we want to be able to do is to convert between polar and rectangular form. And um, it turns out that to do this, it, it's basically the same exercise as writing a complex number in polar form, which is why they put this in the same section with complex numbers. But you, you may also remember that writing a complex number in polar form is really the same exercise as writing a vector in polar form. So all of those ideas are pretty much the same. Um, and so we've done these problems enough. I mean, we'll just look at a couple examples. So this one says convert the following rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates with r greater than zero and theta between zero and 360. Uh, these conditions will just make it so that we end up with uh, the same answer. Okay, so we'll all end up with the same answer uh, because we're, we're imposing these restrictions on our answer. Um, okay, so just to get a quick sketch of negative one, one, negative one, or sorry, it's negative one, negative one. So there it is in rectangular form. And we need to describe that same location using polar coordinates, OK? So you can see that, well, it's the same thing as finding that complex number in polar form, right? And so we can say uh, r is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. In this case, that's going to be square root of negative one squared plus negative one. So square root of two, right? Square root two. And then tangent theta has to satisfy y over x. So tangent theta is one. But we're not going to say that theta is 45 degrees because that would put us in quadrant one. And we don't want to be in quadrant one. We want to be in quadrant three. So we'll say 45 plus 180. Uh, so that would be. Uh, one, one, oh, holy schmoly, 225. Man, uh, I can't do basic arithmetic. <laughs> I'm a math teacher who can't do basic arithmetic. Yeah, 225, right? So theta would be 225 degrees. So it's tan in inverse of 1 plus 180. Uh, so that's 225 degrees. Okay, so then the polar coordinates would be r theta. Okay, and that's how that works. I think I'm going to skip part B because we've done so much of this. I mean, uh, just we, we've done so much of this kind of in different ways. I don't think you need to see another example. And there's a, there's a lot of material in this section. It really should be like two or three sections, this section here. Um, but, well, maybe the reason they don't do that is because so much of it is kind of review. But anyway, I'm going to skip this one. So, um, okay. Going the other way around, if you're starting with something in polar form, and you, so if you're starting with something in polar form and you want to change it back to rectangular form, then you can just apply this fact, right? X is going to be R cosine theta and Y is going to be R sine theta. And here's a little picture to convince you, but it's the same reasoning as before, right? So if you have some point X, Y, um, and you want to describe that point in polar form, then first you need to find out the length of that uh, segment. And then you also need to describe that angle. So if you're given this angle, 
and you're given the length of the segment r, then you can figure out what x is in terms of r and theta. You can say, well, I know that x over r would be cosine theta, which means that x is r cosine theta. And in a similar way, right, y over r would be sine theta, right? Sine theta is y over r. It's not sine theta, which means that, you know, y is r sine theta, okay? So for example, right, if we want to change the point, the polar point negative 360 into rectangular form, well, then we would just say, well, x has to be r cosine theta. Uh, cosine 60 degrees would be one half. Okay, so this is negative three halves. Y would have to be R sine theta. Sine 60 degrees is uh, root three over two. So this would be negative three root three over two. So in, in rectangular form, negative 360 is the same as the point negative three halves negative three root three halves, three root three, sorry, negative three root three halves. And that's that one. I'm going to skip part B again, because <laughs> I, I think you've got the idea. Um, so that's that. That's how we convert between polar and rectangular form if you're just given a point. Of course, um, we want to do this with entire equations, right? Um, so we can also convert entire equations from rectangular to polar or from polar to rectangular. And to do that, we often employ the following replacements. So anytime you see, if you're wanting to go from rectangular to polar, then anytime you see an X, you can replace it with R cosine theta. And anytime you see a Y, you can replace it with R sine theta, just like we saw on the previous page. Um, but in addition to that, uh, we also know that tangent theta has to satisfy y over x, and we also know that r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Well, if you square both sides, then r squared is just x squared plus y squared, right? So, so any of these relationships are, are useful for us. So, for example, um, let's say that we want to change this rectangular equation into a polar equation. Our goal is to get this to look like r equals something theta. Right, so our goal, so our goal is to get it to look like r equals some function of theta, right? So let's see if we can do that. It's not always possible, by the way, but let's see if we can do that here. So we're gonna say, well, first of all, I see a y, I can replace it with r sine theta. I'm gonna say r sine theta equals, and I see an x, I can replace it with r cosine theta plus two. Okay, so I've eliminated all of the x and y's. This is now officially in polar form. I just want to see if I can simplify it and get it to look like r equals something. So to do that, um, I'll move any term that has an r attached to it to the left hand side and any term that does not have an r attached to it to the right hand side. In this case, that's a pretty simple task. I just need to move this over to the left. So I'm going to say r sine theta minus r cosine theta equals two, and then I can factor out the r. And then I can divide through by sine theta minus cosine theta, and I get r equals two over sine theta minus cosine theta. And there we go, right? Okay. Um, I guess that in this case, theta is not allowed to be, maybe we should say, you know, theta cannot be pi over four, because if theta is pi over four, then um, sine and cosine are equal to each other, and that's bad news. In fact, the, it can't be any, uh, it can't be any coterminaling with pi over four for the same reason, right? Because then you'd have zero, you'd have zero in the denominator. But anyway, but, but that's the equation in polar form. 
Part B is even easier. One way that you could do part B is you could say, well, I'm going to replace X with R cosine theta and replace Y with R sine theta uh, and then do some algebra. But, but you'll notice that if you do that, you, you, you could have gotten to the same place quicker and easier by just employing this, this idea, right? That R squared is X squared plus Y squared. So here I see an X squared plus Y squared. I'm just going to replace it with an R squared and say R squared equals nine. If I want, I can go ahead and solve for r. So I can take the square root of both sides of this equation, and I'm going to get r equals plus or minus 3. Now, for reasons that we'll see in a second, this is when you're talking about a polar equation, this is really equivalent to just saying r equals 3. Because um, uh, here we've eliminated theta altogether. So it doesn't matter what theta is as long as the radius is either positive or negative three. So if you think about like uh, in polar form two, three, uh, you know, theta can be anything. Theta could be zero as long as r is three. Or theta could be, you know, uh, seven, or what is this, five pi over four as long, or no, three pi over four as long as r is three and so forth, right? So you get all of these points kind of on the outside of that circle. So, so the graph is just a circle, right? A circle with radius three. So it's just a circle with radius three. If R is negative three, well, you get the same thing, right? If, if you're at pi over four, then, you, then if R is negative three, you just go in the opposite direction, but you still end up on this circle. So that these two equations in polar form, they mean exactly the same thing. Um, anyway, so, so that's that. Uh, <clears throat> again, you can get there in a different way. It doesn't really matter, but I think this is probably the quickest way to get to R equals three. Um, that kind of gives us some hints as far as how to tackle these, uh, this next problem anyway. So here we're given polar equations and we're being asked to convert them into rectangular form. Um, so, Starting out, starting off with, we have r equals five. Uh, I, I noticed that that doesn't involve any thetas. Uh, I, I suppose I can multiply both sides here by cosine theta. Then I'd have r cosine theta equals five cosine theta, and then r cosine theta could turn into an x, and I could say x equals five cosine theta. But see now, the problem with that is that you're trying to eliminate all the r's and thetas, and so that's it would take some work, I think, to, to eliminate the theta from that point. But, but what you can do is use the same fact that we used before, r squared is x squared plus y squared. So what I'm going to do is just square both sides of this equation. So r squared is 25. And then I get x squared plus y squared equals 25. And that should make sense, right? Because if you remember back in your algebra days, you know that this is a circle centered at 0, 0 with radius 5, right? It's a conic section. So this is a circle was centered at 0, 0 with radius 5. Well, that's exactly what this equation is saying in polar form. It's just saying the radius is 5. doesn't matter what the angle is. The radius has to be 5, right? Uh, so that's that one. Part B, we're given theta equals negative pi over 3. I know I'm flying through these examples, by the way. I apologize. Uh, give the video a pause, you know, so you can catch up and write things down. Um, uh, I'll, I'll let you think about this one. It's a little challenging, I, I think, before if you don't know the trick. Once you know the trick, it's easy. But if you don't know the trick right away, it's maybe a little challenging. So go ahead and give the video a pause and see if you can work it out. Okay, so here's, here's how I'm going to do this. Uh, first of all, notice that uh, if it's telling me theta equals negative pi over 3, it's saying it doesn't matter what the radius is. It's just the angle needs to be negative pi over 3. So that should be a straight line when you think about it, right? When you think about the way this is going to look, uh, negative pi over 3 is, you know, that angle right there. So it's saying... The radius can be whatever, right? As long as the angle is fixed here, so you get this—you get this straight line. 
Um, but to see what its equation would be in rectangular form, what we can do is we're going to apply this fact right here, that tangent theta equals y over x. So what I'm going to do is just take tangent of both sides. I'm going to say, well, if theta is negative pi over 3, then that must mean tangent theta is tangent of negative pi over 3. And tangent of negative pi over 3, I can work out, right? Uh, you can use your calculator if you want, but we could do this one in our heads, I think. So negative pi over 3, uh, so um, tangent sine over cosine, right? So this would be, uh, so sine would be root 3 over 2, negative root 3 over 2. So I'm going to say negative root 3 over 2. And cosine would be 1 half. So then tangent theta looks like it's negative root 3. Um, so there you go. Uh, we've eliminated all of the x and y's, x's and y's. So that's an equation in polar form. It doesn't have that nice, like, oh, hold on a second. I'm not done. I, I lost sight of what it was that I was trying to do. We were given the equation in polar form, right? We're, we're trying to get it into rectangular form. Holy schmoly. Maybe I'm too tired to do a video right now. <laughs> no, bear with me. Okay, so tangent theta is y over x. So we're going to say, so we can replace tangent theta now with y over x. And then, you know, multiply both sides by x, you get y equals negative root 3x. There we go. So, so now you can see for sure it is a it is just a straight line. Okay. Um, so that's that one. <clears throat> um, okay. Moving on. I think I've got a couple more examples of this. Yeah, a couple more examples. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can work out part C. See if you can change that into rectangular form. Okay, there are lots of ways you could potentially do this. Uh, here's how I'm going to do it. I I'm going to use the reciprocal identity here and say secant is 1 over cosine. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by cosine. Because you see, doing that, I can see now uh, that I've got x right here, right? R cosine theta. I can just replace that with x and say x equals 1. Ah, so this thing is just a vertical line, right? It's just a vertical line at 1. Okay, see if you can work out part D. So give, give the video a pause, see if you can work it out. Okay. Um, so what can we do here? Uh, so well, oh, I think I know what to do. So, so one thing that you could do is you could square both sides. Then you're going to get an r squared. That's good because you can replace that with x squared plus y squared. Then here you get four sine squared theta. That's a little more challenging because I'm not sure you can, I'm not sure you can do anything with uh, uh, sine squared theta. Another thing you could do is multiply. Maybe you could multiply both sides by sine theta. Then you could say. You have r sine theta. That's nice. You can replace that with y. But then uh, here you can have 2 sine squared theta. And again, you're going to have trouble getting rid of that sine squared theta and replacing it with x's and y's. So another thing you could do maybe is to multiply through by r. And that's the winner, I think, here. If we multiply both sides of this equation by r, then on the left-hand side we get r squared. And on the right-hand side, we get 2r sine theta. Ah, see, now you can replace this with y. You can replace this with x squared plus y squared. And you have uh, achieved your goal, right? Right? So now you've rewritten this equation in uh, rectangular form. Um, this is not the standard form of this equation. Right? Uh, 
this must be some kind of conic section because you have quadratics in X and Y going on. So it must be some kind of quadratic or some kind of conic section. I'm thinking it's a circle. Uh, but to, to get it in standard form, what we would do is move everything over and then complete the square, right? So if I move the 2y over, I have x squared plus y squared minus 2y. I'm going to leave myself some space so that I can complete the square. It's maybe been a while since you've had to do this, right? But um, well, let's see. What would I add right here? Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, and negative 1 squared is positive 1. So I'm going to add 1, which means I've got to add 1 on the right. And now I can write this as x squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 1. Yeah, so it's a circle. It's a circle centered at 0, 1 with radius 1. Oh, so that's kind of interesting, right? Um, OK, one more. Part E. So uh, go ahead and give the video a pause and see if you can work this one out. Okay. So, um, So what can we do with this guy here? Um, well, uh, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 plus sine theta. So I'm going to call this r times 1 plus sine theta equals 4. If I distribute the r, I'm going to get an r sine theta, which I can replace with y. But then I'm also going to get another r over here. So I'm going to get r plus r sine theta equals 4. And I'm not exactly sure what to do with this other r. I could multiply through by r so that I get an r squared here. Um, but then that's going to mess things up there and there. So I'm not really sure I want to do that. Um, you know, maybe what I'll do is this. I'm going to move the r sine theta back over. Square both sides. So, uh, do I want to do that? Not yet. Let me change this to a y now. Now I'll square both sides. So I'm going to get r squared equals 16 minus 8y plus y squared. OK, and now I can replace r squared with x squared plus y squared. I can subtract a y squared. That's kind of nice. So I get x squared equals 16 minus 8y. And um, if I want to solve that for y, I suppose I could. Um, so solving for y, I would say negative 8y equals x squared minus 16. So y is, oh, uh, so negative one eighth x squared plus two. So there you go. So it's a parabola, a parabola with vertex zero two, right? And it's been uh, it's been widened out a little bit, well, quite a lot actually. <laughs> uh, but that's that one. Okay. Um, all right. So um, we're, we're kind of getting a sense for how the polar coordinate system works. We know how to plot points in the polar coordinate system. And uh, we know how to convert between polar and rectangular form when you're working with points and when you're working with equations in general. Uh, what I want to do next, and to finish off the section, we'll talk about uh, graphing polar equations. Now, you might ask yourself, if we know how to convert between polar and rectangular form, then in order to graph polar equations, why don't we just convert them into rectangular form and then graph the rectangular form? The problem with that approach is that, first of all, not all polar equations convert nicely to rectangular equations. Um, the ones that we've seen uh, have been ones that happen to convert 
that happen to convert over nicely, but not all of them do. Um, and so that's problem number one. And then problem number two is that even if you could figure out what the rectangular version of the equation is, that still wouldn't guarantee that you know how to even graph the rectangular equation. So it might not do you any good anyway, right? So um, consequently, we're just gonna learn to deal with uh, graphs when they're given to us in, in polar form. Um, we could spend a lot of time analyzing these equations, trying to come up with good ways to graph them, um, but, uh, but we won't. Okay, we're gonna take a little more basic approach. We're just gonna plot points basically. Okay, so we're going to plug in several values of theta until we notice a pattern, right? And then we're going to join the points with a smooth curve. Now that said, it, it, doesn't, help, it doesn't hurt to know or, or to have an idea of what to expect. And so on the very last page of your notes, on the very last page of your notes, um, uh, I've included a chart with some of the more common types of polar graphs that you'll see. Um, and so I'll let you kind of study this chart, you know, uh, look over it and, uh, uh, so, and then see if you can start to recognize different, uh, different kinds of graphs. Okay. Um, but anyway, so, so taking you back, let, let me just walk you through a few examples where we just plot some points to see what we get. Um, okay, so if we want to plot r equals 2 plus 2 sine theta, I, I know from past experience that this thing is going to look, th this thing is going to be a lima song, which uh, means that it could look, that's French for snail, I believe. <laughs> so it's going to look somewhat snail-like. Uh, it could have a little loop in the center or it could just have a little dimple. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, you can tell based on these numbers right here. Uh, since you look at the ratio of those two numbers, and in this case, it's equal to one. And so what I think that means is that it's going to have a cusp. So it's going to look kind of like a heart. Um, I could be wrong about that. And then this one, because it's a sign, it's going to open up and down instead of left and right. None of that needs to make any sense to you necessarily at this point. But as you go through some of the examples, and as you look back at that chart that I just showed you on the last page of the notes, then you'll, uh, you'll start to develop some intuition. Um, anyway, I'm just going to plot some points. I'm going to plug in some stuff for theta. I guess I should do this the other way around. I'm going to plug in some stuff for theta and see what I get for r. So, um, so I like to do kind of like all of the standard ones, 0, uh, 0, pi over uh, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. Uh, that gets us from here to here. You know, we could do that all the way around the entire, the entire circle. It might not be a bad idea to do that, just to kind of get our bearings. Um, so pi over 2. Uh, so this would be uh, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 4. 5 pi over 6 and pi. Um, and that'll get me all the way to there. Then let's see what else we would do. So we would do, uh, so next we would do 7 pi over 6, 5 pi over 4, 4 pi over 3, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 3, 7 pi over 4, um, 11 pi over 6. And then by the time we get here, uh, we're at 2 pi. We're back to where we started, OK? We're not, we're not looking at any multiples of theta. If you're looking at multiples of theta, then that's going to affect your period, obviously. But in this case, we're not looking at multiples of theta. Uh, so I know that at 2 pi, the, the period uh, starts all over again. So this should give us a complete picture. This should give us a very, very complete picture, plugging in these points. In fact, you could probably get away with plugging in fewer points in the future. But just for this first example, I think it's a good idea to maybe look at all of these things. 
So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator for this. Not that I couldn't do this in my head, but I think it'll go quicker if I just use my calculator. I'm going to change this to radian mode. Uh, okay, so I want to do 2 plus 2 sine theta. So when theta is 0, then r is 2. When theta is pi over 6, then r is 3. When theta is pi over 4, then r is root 2 over 2, which is approximately 3.4. When theta is pi over 3, I get approximately 3.7. Pi over 2, I'm at 4. And then I'm going to have a mirror image, right? Since this is the sine function, you know that um, uh, in quadrants one and two, the values are are just they're equal, they're they're identical, right? So they're just mirror images. So this one's going to be about 3.7, about 3.4, 3, and um, two. Okay. When I get to seven pi over six, now I'm going to have some negative angles. Or, or some negative output. So let me throw that into my calculator again. 7 pi over 6. So that puts me at 3. Oh, sorry. No, that's not right. Let me fix that. Should be 1. Should be 1. 1. 5 pi over 4. is approximately 0 0.6. 4 pi over 3 puts me at about 0 0.3. And 3 pi over 2 puts me at 0. OK? And then again, these are the next set is going to be mirror images, about 0.3 about 0.6, uh, 1, and then at 2 pi, I'm back to where I started at 2. So let's start to plot these points now. So I have 0, 2, pi over 6, 3, pi over 4, 3.4, 1, 2, 3.4, pi over 3, 3.7, 1, 2, 3.7, pi over 2, 4, then mirror images like this. And then by the time I get to pi, I'm at 2 again. 1, 2. At 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6, I'm at 1. 5 pi over 4, I'm at, I'm at about 0. 0.6. At pi over 3, I'm at about 0. 0.3. And then at pi over 2, I'm at 0. And then I get another mirror image. Oh, I missed. So like this, and then like this. And then finally at 2 pi, I'm back out at 2. So, so then we connect the dots with a smooth curve, and you should connect them in order. So we started here, and we went around this way. And we got a little dimple, right? So we call these things cardioids. Cardioids are a special kind of limosome, but they're called cardioids because, you know, they look like hearts. Anyway. Uh, so again, looking back at that last page, right? So you have all all these different kinds of limosome, uh, and in our case, it was a cardioid because the ratio of these two numbers was equal to one. So we got a little cusp. Um, okay. So there's that one. I don't think I'm going to plug in quite so many points for the rest of them, but uh, but an, an important feature of this is that. Uh, and I know I said this already, but let me just emphasize, connect the dots in order. 
in the order that you, that you graphed them here. In other words, uh, you, you could connect these dots in any, in any old way, right? You could go like, oh, I think it looks something like this and this would be wrong, right? Because you need to connect the dots in order. We started here and then at pi over six, we were there. At pi over four, we were there. At pi over three, there. At pi over two, there, right? And so we work around in order. I'm making the picture really bad now, but anyway, but that's the idea. So go ahead and give the video a pause and see if you can do part B on your own. Okay, here's my solution. Um, so this one might be a little bit tricky because we have a three theta in here. Whenever you have this kind of situation, you get, these are called rows curves. And I believe that when this number is odd, you get this number of petals. If this number is even, then you get twice this number of petals, which is kind of crazy. But, uh, but since this one's odd, I think we're gonna have three petals on our rows. Um, but um, I'm not gonna plug in as many points as I plugged in on the previous one, at least not initially. I might come back and plug in some more points if I need to, but for now, I'm just gonna plug in, I think I'm gonna plug in um, zero, pi over four. Well, do I wanna do pi over four? If I do pi over four, I get three times pi over four, so that's, uh, well, sine, sine three pi, that might be okay, actually. That might be okay. Um, yeah, so let me plug in zero, pi over four, uh, pi over two, three pi over four, pi, five pi over four, three pi over two, and seven pi over four. That gets me around, that gets me around the entire circle. Um, so I'll do that much and let's see what we get. So if I plug in zero, I know sine of zero is zero. If I plug in pi over four, then I have sine three pi over four. So four, four sine three pi over four is about 2.8. If I plug in pi over two, three times pi over two, and I get negative four. If I plug in three pi over four, three times three pi over four, and well, then I get about 2.8 again. If I plug in pi, I know I'm going to get zero. If I plug in five pi over four, I get about negative 2.8. If I plug in three pi over two, I get four. And if I plug in seven pi over four, I get about negative 2.8 again. I don't know how good this information is though, um, because, uh, because I'm multiplying my angle by three, I almost feel like, it, so if I'm trying to figure out, for example, when this thing is at its maximum, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out when sine theta is equal or, or when sine three theta is equal to one? Well, I know that sine is equal to one when theta equal, or when uh, the angle is pi over two. So I need three times theta. I need three times theta to equal pi over two. That's gonna happen if theta equals pi over six. So I actually, I think I might actually want the pi over six and, and all of that. So, uh, so I'm gonna plug in pi over six to see what the maximum should be. Well, at, at pi over six, actually, this should be, this should be four, right? Uh, so that tells me that I'm, I'm gonna have a maximum here at an angle of pi over six, 
and that maximum is going to be four. One, two, three, four. Whereas at pi over four, I was only at 2.8. One, 2.8. At zero, I was at zero. At pi over two, I was at negative four, one, two, three, four. So there's another maximum. So that must be another pedal. So I'm thinking I have a pedal opening out this way and then another pedal opening out that way. And then I'm going to guess I have another pedal opening out this way, right? Because it's I know it's kind of a symmetric looking deal. Um, at three pi over two, I'm at four again. So I think I think at this point, I'm just retracing the same picture over and over again. Uh, so, so I'm curious to know. I, I suspect that I have a pedal going out here at five pi over six. So I'm just going to check to make sure that if I plug in five pi over six, I get four for R. So let me see. Five pi over six. Yeah, I get four. So I know I've got another pedal coming out this way by the time I get to 5 pi over 6. Or hold on, 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. Whereas, um, you know, at 3 pi over 4, again, I was only at like 2.8, 1, 2.8, right about there. So let's see. So, so wh where am I? So I did 0, and then I did uh, pi over 6. 4, and then I did pi over 4, 2.8, and then um, and then I did pi over 2, negative 4, and then I did 3 pi over 4, 2.8, and then I did 5 pi over 6, 4, okay, and then I'm back at pi 0, so back there. Then at 5 pi over 4, I would be at negative 2.8, that's that same point. At 3 pi over 2, I'd be at 4. At 7 pi over 4, I'd be back at negative 2.8. That's that same point. And then at, at 0, or at 2 pi, I'd be back at 0. So I think um, this is the picture that we get. So this is where I started at 0, 0. Then we go up to 5 pi over 6, or sorry, pi over 6, 4. And then loop back around to pi over 4, 2.8. At some point, it seems like we've got to cross through at zero again. That's going to happen if sine of, you know, x is equal to zero. That's going to happen at zero and at pi. So, so I think if theta is pi over three, then three times theta would be pi and sine pi would be zero, right? So in other words, when I plug in pi over three, I get zero. So at this angle right here, I'm back at zero. That means the pedal must go like that, back down to zero. OK. Then by the time I get to pi over 2, by the time I get to pi over 2, I'm down at negative 4, so I'm down here. So if I'm, if I'm connecting the dots in order, then I started at this point, I looped out to my maximum, looped back around, back to zero, and now I'm going to come back over. Uh, now I'm going to come back over this way and loop back around, I suppose. Something like that. And then I think I'm going to loop back around this way and back around. And then I'm going to start retracing the same thing over and over and over again. So I get, so I just get this rose curve. These roses are, I think, among the more challenging ones to graph. Uh, but that's the idea there. So you just trace that curve over and over and over again. Um, in a second, I'm going to pull up Desmos and show you some of these things in Desmos so that we can verify that this is correct. But, but looking at that chart at the end of the section, it is a rose curve, right? So, um, so like I said, when, when the number you're multiplying by is odd, then you get that number of petals. So if this number is three, then you have three petals. If this number is five, you have five petals. If the number that you're multiplying by is even, then you get twice that number of petals. So here, if the number is two, you have four petals. Here, the number is four, so you have eight petals. 
And then notice what sine and cosine do uh, to the graph. If it's a cosine, then the first petal opens up on the x-axis, right, in both, in both cases. But if it's a sine, then the first petal opens up kind of tilted away from the x-axis, right, in both cases. And so uh, that's how, that's kind of the intuition that I was using going into this, that I, I knew I would have three petals and I knew that the first one was going to start kind of tilted away from the x-axis. To figure out where that pedal ended up, I, need to figure, I needed to figure out, well, what is the maximum? Uh, when does the maximum take place, right? And I knew that the maximum would take place when theta was pi over 6, okay? Because they said, well, what's the largest that sine can be? The largest that sine can be is 1, and that happens when you're looking at sine of pi over 2, right? Sine pi over 2 is 1. So I needed for 3 theta, I needed for 3 theta to equal pi over 2. And if 3 theta is pi over 2, then that means theta is pi over 6. So that's how I knew where to place that first pedal. And then the rest of it just kind of follows from there. Actually, it goes here and then here and then up there, right? <laughs> um, so that's that one. These things just take a little bit of practice. You'll, you'll have a chance to practice this when you do the homework. Um, let me give you a couple more. <clears throat> Another Lima song here. Um, let's plug in some numbers. Well, actually, go ahead and give the video a pause and see if you can work it out on your own. Okay, but here's, here's my solution. So I'm going to do 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2, and 7 pi over 4. So I'm just doing like every pi over 4 uh, units. And if I need to come back and, and fill in some more details to make sure that I'm on the right track, then I'll, I'll do that. But this is what I'm going to plug in for now. So, um, so let's see, 1 minus 2 times cosine of 0 radians is negative 1. If I plug in pi over 4, I have about negative 0 0.4. If I plug in pi over 2, I'm at 1. I'm at 3 pi over 4. I'm at about 2.4 at pi, I'm at 3, I'm at 5 pi over 4, uh, I'm at about 2.4 at 3 pi over 2, and 1, and at 7 pi over 4, I'm at about negative 0 0.4. OK, let's plot these things and see if we've got a decent enough picture to go off of. So 0, negative 1. Pi over 4, negative 0.4. Pi over 2, 1. 3 pi over 4, 2.4. 1, 2, 0.4. Pi, 3, 1, 2, 3. 5 pi over 4, 2.4, 2 1, 2.4. 2 3 pi over 2, 1. 7 pi over 4, negative 0.4, right about there. <laughs> and if you're wondering to yourself, what in the world is going on? It's just this crazy jumble of points. But remember to connect the dots in order. If you connect the dots in order, it's, it maybe starts to make a little bit more sense. So I started at 0, negative 1, and then I went to pi over 4, negative 0.4. So pi over 4, negative 0.4, that's that one right there. Okay. Then from there, I went to pi over 2, pi over 2, 1. That, that, that's that point right there. So I'm guessing it goes something like this it probably passes right through the center. Uh, 
Yeah, it's going to pass through the center whenever cosine theta is equal to one half, right? Where does that happen? Um, that happens at uh, pi over three, right? So if I plug in pi over three, I bet I'm going to get zero, right? Cosine pi over three is one half. Two times one half is one. One minus one is zero, right? So, so actually at pi over three, I'm passing through zero. So I get here zero and then pi over four. Pi over three, I'm passing through zero. Okay, passing through zero. And then up to that point right there. And then where am I going? Uh, then I'm at three pi over two, 2.4. Uh, no, nope. sorry, 3 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 2.4, that, that's that point right there. So it's up to there. And then pi 3 puts me there. 5 pi over 4, 2.4 puts me there. 3 pi over 2, 1 puts me there. 7 pi over 4, negative 0.4 is that point right there. And I'm guessing, once again, that I'm going to cross through 0 and hit that point. And then I didn't draw it in, but, you know, at 2 pi, we'd end up back where we started at negative 1. So at 2 pi, negative 1, we're back at that point there, and that closes the loop. So there you go, right? It's this little limousine, this little snail. And you can see that uh, in the chart, right? You get... You get a limousine with an inner loop if the ratios, right, the ratio of this number to that number is less than one. So this number to that number, that's one half, sure enough, right, less than one, so we get this little inner loop. <clears throat> okay. Um, one more, I, I think I'm going to skip this one. R equals three plus three sine theta. This is going to be another cardioid because those ratios equal one. So it's actually going to be very similar to this first one that we did. Two plus two sine theta, three plus three sine theta. It's going to look exactly the same, only uh, it's going to look, it's going to be a little bigger, right? So whereas two plus two sine theta went up to four, I think three plus three sine theta would go up all the way to six. Um, you know, but otherwise it's going to look exactly the same, a little cardioid. So, so, um, so I'm going to skip that one. But what I do want to take you, take you to is uh, I want to go to Desmos now and um, type in this equation just to show you how cool polar graphs can be. Uh, uh, I, I don't think anybody is really all that good at graphing polar equations, to tell you the truth. Because it's like we spend all of this time learning how to graph in rectangular co rectangular coordinates, but then um, but then we get to polar coordinates and we're like just we're like ah we'll we'll just uh, we'll just plot points. <laughs> so nobody ever gets very good at it. So uh, this nasty equation that I'm pointing out to you now is not something that anybody would be able to do by hand, but it's cool to look at in Desmos. I'm going to open up Desmos. Um, if you've never seen Desmos before, then, you know, it, it's this really nice kind of graphing calculator online. And it's a default setting is to open up in rectangular form. If you want to change it to polar form, then you can click this little wrench up here and then click on that grid so that everything is in polar form now, right? And then uh, I'm going to start typing this equation. I'm going to say R equals 3.5. So that's just a circle then minus 1.5 times the absolute value of cosine theta. That's kind of interesting looking. Times the square root of 1.3 plus absolute value sine theta. Okay, that's interesting looking. Then plus cosine 2 theta, ah, okay, minus 3 sine theta, 
Ooh, a little heart. <laughs> uh, plus 0 0.7, a uh, better looking heart, cosine 12.2 theta. Oh, look at that. You could keep adding stuff on here and see what happens, but that's a pretty cool picture. <laughs> you can see that things could get really, really complicated. <laughs> they, they can get really pretty complicated. Imagine trying to do this thing by hand. Ah, oh, it just wouldn't be possible. But thank goodness we have nice online tools and stuff now. Um, anyway, that's all I'm going to say about graphing polar equations. Um, so we will check in with you in the next section.